This is Arthur Curry, master tactician, World War I hero, who became principal of McGill University in 1920, but found himself in 1930 dealing with a situation that was not following the rules of engagement as he understood them. He was dealing with a sculptor, a pianist, and a gift of a sculpture to McGill University that was looking like it was coming at a high price. In May 1931, the McGill graduating class was treated to a very special event of the unveiling of a sculpture. This wasn't any work of art. This was the Friendship Fountain, a gift from Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney in the United States as friendship between the United States and Canada. Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney is remembered as a patron of the art. She was the founder of the Whitney Museum, but she was also a sculptor and made outdoor sculptures that are in a number of places, um, not only in the United States, but also in France, Spain, and Canada. The story of the sculpture coming to McGill is a little bit of a, a, an interesting story. It begins with a woman named Ellen Ballen, who was a local child prodigy and in music, a pianist, who went to New York, became a great success, and a person in the arts, and got, she got to know Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney. And it was her idea to have Gertrude give this sculpture to McGill University and Epstein did a sculpture of Ellen, which is now also in the collection at McGill University. McGill University at, was trying to make itself as a major intellectual power of a university, and major universities have art collections and have art on the campus. And Ellen, being someone in the arts, saw uh, all at once an opportunity to place the sculpture by Gertrude, which needed a home, and to raise the profile of McGill. There was a committee from the United States involved in publicizing the event. High profile Americans and the editor of the New York Times, who was a McGill graduate, was the person there making the presentation. At McGill, they were grateful to be offered a gift, but Gertrude had said that she would provide the money for the installation of the sculpture, but the check never seemed to be in the mail. So Arthur Curry, facing great difficulty in just keeping the university afloat during this difficult economic time, found himself with a sculpture without the money to get it properly installed. The unveiling happened actually before the sculpture was properly installed. It was unveiled sort of on a wooden base, and remained for several years um, on that base and not well installed. Um, Percy Nobbs, famous architect um, at McGill, designed the base, um, but it was not for several years that the money was made available to install the base. The sculptures had an interesting history at McGill. It's been very much loved by students, and there is a certain cachet about having something by someone who is as famous in the art world as Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney here. It remains an unusual sculpture in that it really has nothing to do with Canada, the United States, or anything about research. Its roots are really in European sculpture and ancient, ancient Greek art. So in terms of how it places McGill as a major power in the world of universities, I'm not sure it effectively did that. Um, it's, it's really like nothing else on any other campus. 